segment? I do, and this one might be a little controversial. We didn't have it in the in the I last it, episode. It is a little controversial. It is, but we'll explain why. Welcome back, Thin Ice. Why don't you tell everybody watching at home what Thin Ice is and, and sort of the reason behind it before we jump right into it? Yeah, for anybody that hasn't joined us on our other three episodes, Thin Ice is essentially a team that is underperforming or was performing really well, and now they're underperforming. We had Minnesota Rocker on. We've had New York on Thin Ice. Um, like London wouldn't even really fit the criteria they're, because— They've fallen through the ice, and they're really just— in a they're drowning. They've just been struggling lately. But this team, I think it makes complete sense. Some people might disagree with us here, but it's it's Toronto Ultra. Um, yep. They were your major three champions. They win our home series. They're looking insane and obviously started stage 0-3. Today they do get a win over Florida. Yeah. Um, but they were looking insane, and they've been kind of, you know, they've been struggling a little bit lately. But I do want to point out that the teams that they've been playing have been very tough competition. It's not like they're losing to teams they should, like, should not be losing to. They're losing to teams that are very, very solid. And you can break down some of those teams for right now. I mean, they lose to Boston 2-3. They lose to Seattle 2-3. And they lose to Atlanta 1-3. So, once, like you said, these are all teams that can compete for titles and championships. That being said, with the form that they displayed at the major, they obviously win the major and they look so dominant in modes like control. They looked great in search. We don't see that same clutch ability. And we saw it in Scrap's post-game interview today. He's like, I just don't think we're clutching up right now. And I'd agree with him. And the reason they're, they're on thin ice. Fives. Exactly. The reason they're on thin ice is not because we're not sounding the alarms yet. No. But absolutely not. They're walking on that thin ice where a loss versus, I believe, Vegas next would start them in the loser's bracket. Vegas yep. has a lot to prove. They're obviously in that race versus Rocker. So Ultra need to shape up and sort of find that prior form, that, that prior clutch ability that they brought to the major. Yeah. Uh, I, th I, I think this team is honestly fine. They do lose a couple close matches. They are on thin ice just because of the form that they presented us with at Major 3. And people were kind of saying that that might be a honeymoon period. What do you think about that? Because the honeymoon period is a big thing in Call of Duty. Uh, yes and no. I think Ultra, no matter what, will be competitive. I think Scrap's still one of the best players in the game, even though they've been losing some of these close series. I think we're getting to the point of the year where every team is kind of playing the game in a similar way because we've been playing it for so long now. All the top teams have kind of figured out the optimal way to play. So now it just comes down to who shows up on that day, yep. and it's kind of like a talent off who's clutching up. So I think Ultra will always be competitive, but I don't think we'll see them be as dominant as we saw them at Major 3, just based on uh, every team now shaping up and, and hitting form late in the year. Yeah, I mean, I just want to point out a couple of individual stats here. We're not going to roast players. This team is obviously very, very talented from top to bottom, but the only player that's positive on their team at the moment is Scrap, and he's yeah. sitting at a 1.05. The rest of the team is negative, and after the performance that we saw from the sub-duo, Kleenex and Hixie, we just, you know, we just want to see them do a little bit more. Kleenex obviously had a breakout stage last stage. He looked like a top three sub in the game. Now I just think they need to go back to the drawing board and and refine what made them that powerhouse team. Yeah, I agree. Doctor Doug, sure. Let's open these up. We we got some more advanced statistics. Thank you to Doctor Doug Lieb for uh, his help. He's always hooking us up with some important information. So. Um, they're they're one in five in S and D through three games, which they're is surprising because they look good in search throughout all of stage three. Yeah, so one in five. Um, they went thirty two and thirty seven all of major two, which doesn't really apply. But all of their S and Ds have been close. All of their S and D losses have been six five or six four. So they're not getting blown out in it. And that's the thing with Call of Duty. We talk about it a lot. There's so many minuscule moments that can happen in a series that can really just turn the tide of it, and it seems like it's happening to these guys. They're losing 6-5s. They're losing 6-4s. Sometimes, it, sometimes it just doesn't fall your way, and that might be a case of what we're seeing in Toronto right now. I agree, and we don't got to spend too much time on it. I mean, we say these guys are on thin ice, but it's not like super worrying yet. But like once again, they are sort of walking that line where this, this Vegas matchup is going to be big for them. Yeah, uh, I think we can move on from that. Uh, Toronto on thin ice. I don't think it's any time to worry for this team. We've seen that form. We've seen them win a major. But, but let's start shaping it up. Like let's get back to that form. We got to point it out. They're one and three in the stage. They still have an opportunity to make winners. Maybe 
they probably have to three zero Vegas, and yeah. Vegas is basically fighting for their champ's life at this point. So we just need to see a little more out of Toronto, and uh, we all know that they got that in them, man. Yeah, 